Hello everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Maze, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a wooden box in any shape you want. Now this technique I'm going to show you essentially involves layering, and the two main tools you're going to need to do this are a scroll saw and a router with a flush trim bit. So if you have those two things, or something that can substitute for those things like a fret saw or a spindle sander, you can make a box with any shape you want. So with that out of the way, let's make some dust. So to make this, I'm going to be using quarter inch birch plywood, mainly to emphasize the idea of the layering so that this video focuses on that aspect of this technique and not the milling aspect. Um, but an interesting thing you can do with this technique is use contrasting woods in the different layers so you can see some of these pictures of other boxes I've made where I use that technique to give it that little bit of extra flair. But in this box we're just going to stick with the plywood. So the first thing you need to do is to cut your wood to the same size squares or rectangles. You can do this freehand on the scroll saw, but I have a table saw, so I use that because it's quick and I like having the rectangles, in my case, perfectly straight. But you could do this with a jigsaw or a scroll saw. You just need them to be about the same size. In my case, they are six by nine inches. Once it's all cut out, you need to divide it into three groups. Uh, the lid, which should be two quarter inch layers, and the middle or the body of the box, which can have as many layers as you want, really. You could literally make this thing three feet tall if you wanted to, um, but I went with the more conservative uh, six quarter inch layers. And lastly, you will need the bottom, which only needs one quarter inch layer. Now we are ready to come up with our shape. If you didn't cut your plywood on a table saw and your pieces vary in size a little bit, pick the piece that is the smallest and this is going to be one of your two top pieces and draw your design. At this point, I had no idea what this was going to be I only knew it was going to be for a woman, so I wanted it to be elegant uh, looking. Um, and I'm just brainstorming some ideas and seeing what they look like. And some of them I kept, um, some of them I didn't. As the build went along, I got other ideas. But here's a little peek into the madness of my mind. You, of course, could do whatever you want. So you only really need to choose an outside shape at this time. The rest can still be decided later. So I was happy with the profile. So I took the design piece and one of the middle pieces, which from now on will be the body template and use the masking tape and super glue trick to stick them together. I also glued up the rest of the middle pieces at this time. Now because of the size of the router bit I had, the maximum number of quarter inch layers I can do at once is three. So I glued up three of the quarter inch middle pieces together and then glued up the remaining two. And I kind of overdid it with clamps. Now it's time to cut out the profile and all the other layers of the box are going to be based upon these two layers. So it's important to take the time to make them as well as you can. Um, I cut out most of it on the scroll saw and then headed over to the belt sander to clean it up. Then it was time to think about the inside shape of the box. So I set my compass to 3 8 of an inch and traced the outside profile to give myself kind of the starting point of my inside line. Uh, one thing you have to be aware of is that the router bit 
isn't going to be able to do sharp corners or points so round those off or straighten them out or get rid of them then cut it out uh, drill a hole and head over to the scroll saw and cut it out now you can't really clean this one up on the belt sander like I would normally do so a spindle sander would come in handy but I don't have one uh, so it was hand files uh, now this is the body template so all other pieces are going to be based upon this piece so just take the time to make this one perfect and then you don't have to worry about it again and now you could take that part and draw it onto your lid and you want to keep any decorative designs or cuts that you're going to make inside that new line. And now that we have the shape of the inside of the box, we can use that to mark out the lower layer of the lid and then go to the scroll saw and cut that out. And now we get to the heart of this technique. First thing you need to do is to glue the body template to one of your body layers that we glued up earlier. For the first one, I chose the two layered one, but it doesn't matter, um, just glue that up. And once it's dry, wait at least an hour, um, then head over to the scroll saw and cut it out. Now I started with uh, the inside of the box and I just cut as close to the wall as I could without ever touching it, about a 16th to a 32nd away. And as you can see, it was starting to get late. And then I took that over to the router and with the flush trim bit set so that it was guided by the body template, I routed out the inside. And then went over to the scroll saw and cut out the outside. Again, just getting close to the wall and staying away from it. And then heading over to the router and routing it and trimming it up so it's flush. So then I glued that to the next body layer and I came back the next morning and it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Uh, cut it out and route it flush. And you could pretty much do this indefinitely. Uh, after a while it won't fit on the scroll saw glued up anymore so you have to cut out that layer before gluing it to the main body and then routing it flush. Uh, but other than that, the process is the same. Now I stopped after this one and my box ended up being about an inch and a half deep. Uh, but again, it's all up to you. You could make it as big or as small as you want. Then it was time to work on the decorative part of the box. The first thing I did was dyed the top of the lower lid with red with leather dye. And then I sprayed that with polyurethane. It's important to use poly because normally I would use shellac, but this red bleeds when I do that. So instead I use poly. And if I do that and do a light first coat to seal in the color, it doesn't bleed. So I'm basically using poly on the top and then shellac on the body of the box. And then I picked a design that I liked. I finally had to make a decision on that. And I uh, made it in Inkscape using some stuff off the internet and then kind of modifying it. And I glued that to the lid and cut it out. Now I'm not really going to go over the techniques of how to use a scroll saw to cut things like this because this is more about how to make your own box any way you want not how to make this specific box but it's pretty much what you would imagine it just takes forever as you can see it's going to take me 
the rest of the day when it starts to get dark. So then I come back the next day and with small files and some carving knives I carve out and file the final shape of the box to give it that little extra bit. A lot of people don't do the file work but I think it makes it just look a lot nicer and here you could see what we ended up with. Then using a dark walnut stain I stained the lid and waited for that to dry and once it was dry I used five minute epoxy and super glue to glue the lower lid to the upper lid and I used the body of the box to make sure the lower lid was properly aligned and would close right. Now the tolerances are up to you but for me this lid should not be tight, definitely not friction fit. You want someone to be able to come up to it and just lift off the top with one hand. So I made my loose my lid a pretty loose fit. And then after that, I sprayed it with poly and the lid was done. Then it was time to glue the body of the box to the bottom of the box. And after letting it dry, I cut off the excess with a scroll saw. And this time I flushed it up on the belt sander. Since it was only one quarter inch layer, the belt sander could handle it just fine. So I just did it with the belt sander. And then I sanded the outside to 220. Now I ignore the inside at this point. I have something planned for the inside so I could completely ignore it during the sanding, which is great because it's a pain to sand the inside. And then I go to staining it and you do stain the inside and, and the whole outside obviously. Again, this is dark walnut stain. And then after that, I use shellac as the clear coat and you stain both the arc coat both the outside and the inside with shellac. I usually do about three coats of shellac. So on the inside I'm going to do what's called flocking and to prep for that you just mask off the top lip of the box with painters tape. Then you paint on the glue and I know it, it looks like paint but it's actually glue and you want a nice even coat of this so that you can't see the wood anymore and then you take this blow gun and you shoot the flocking into the box and you want to wear a mask because this stuff is nasty and gets all over the place and normally I would do this in a box to contain the dust a bit but for the camera I did it this way and now you can't use too much of this stuff. Anything that you use that's too much will just fall out later on once it dries. So just overdo it because any mistake you make, you can't fix it without everybody knowing that you fixed it. You got one shot at this, so just overshoot it. Shoot too much so it just piles up in the corners and then you can come back once it's dry and knock it or blow it out. So you can't use too much, but you could totally use too little, so just have fun, have at it. And we are done. And check it out, this is what it ended up like. Now this video is about mainly how to make a box in shapes other than squares and rectangles, so I kind of glossed over all the other techniques that I was using. But if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask me in the comments. I don't get many comments so I'll answer anything I can. And if you make a box using this technique, uh, post it on Instagram and tag me because I'd love to see it. And that's the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you liked it. If you did, consider hitting that like button because it just makes me feel good about myself when you do. And if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe and hang out longer by watching another one of my videos. And if you learned anything, share it with anyone you know who's into woodworking 
or if you want someone to make it for you kind of drop them the hint by sharing them this video and as always support your local craftsmen and get out in your workshops and make your own dust and together we can make making great again I guess my health bar is, has run out, huh? Well, I want to say thank you to all of you for being by my side. It's been an honor, but it's time for me to go. Oh! Smash like, subscribe, bye.